Hello students and welcome to this calculus lesson. In this video, we're going to be looking at some averages using a contextual problem. So grab your calculators and let's get started. So in this problem, we're given information about a ski resort. And this ski resort has a slope where there's a snow machine throwing snow onto a slope so that skiers and snowboarders can ski down this slope. Obviously, snow also melts. So we have we know how much output the snow machine is thrown out there. We also know how quickly that snow is melting. We have functions for each. So now we'll be able to calculate a lot of information that could be useful to the owners of this ski resort. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is compute the total volume of snow added to the mountain over the first six hour period. So this is how much snow gets added we only want to calculate this over six hours all right so all i need to do is the total volume is going to be from zero to six hours and i'm going to put in 24 minus t times sine squared of t over 14 dt so this is going to give me the total volume of snow added i don't care how quickly it melts here and let's calculate this All right, and when I calculate this, we get this in as many decimal places as possible. So going to four decimal places, 142.4132. And even though it doesn't say it here, I am going to still want to write, all right, what are the units that I'm measuring in? And since this is volume and we're given this, we know that this is going to be cubic yards. Of course, I could just do yards um, and put the cube next to it. I don't know why I wrote it like that, but you get the idea, cubic yards. So now we wanna find the value of zero to six, uh, the integral of zero to six of m of t dt, and then one six times the integral of m of t dt from zero to six. And using the correct units, we wanna explain what they mean in the context of this problem. So you're gonna notice that the calculations are basically given to us, but we do have to say what they mean. So let's calculate these real quick. Okay, and that is going to get us um, the values. And I also wrote down the units here. So our first one, just from zero to six, is going to be 81.8231 cubic yards and our second one with one six is going to be 13.6372 cubic yards per hour all right so let's look at these results and say all right what do they mean in the context of our problem so our first one with zero to six m of t dt well that's going to represent that the the total amount of the melted snow the volume of the melted snow from t equals zero to t equals six hours. Whereas the one times one six is going to represent the average amount of snow that melts per hour from t equals zero to t equals six hours. And so you might be wondering something here. Hopefully you are is, okay, we're basically doing the exact same calculation, but the second one we're multiplying by one six. So why does the second one come out with per hour, whereas the first one doesn't? Well, notice here that it's given in the prompt that we're doing this in cubic yards per hour. So as we go up from basically acceleration to velocity, we're getting, uh, we're going up in terms of, we're taking those hours away. And our second one, you want to think about, okay, what does this one six represent? Well, that is one six in time, all right? So, cause we're doing uh, the six hours minus zero hours. So that what that one six is doing is we're multiplying our result, which is cubic yards, times a, a unit that includes hours in the denominator. So that's why these hours end up getting put back in here because this is measured here in hours. Now we wanna know, okay, is the volume of the snow increasing or decreasing at time t equals four? All right, as I'm doing this problem, let's come up with some sort of function that represents all right what is the volume of snow doing okay so at time t equals 
four, we're gonna look for the exact amount of snow from the beginning from zero to four. We want to take that as a derivative. So let's come up with some sort of function. All right, so I'm gonna say the amount of snow is going, well, what's our starting amount of snow on the hill? Well, that's going to be uh, 50. And then we're going from a uh, zero to T, so zero to essentially T equals four of the amount of snow that gets distributed. So that's kind of be S of T DT. But then we also take away the amount of snow that melts. So we're going to take away from zero to T of the melted snow M of T DT. And since we want to know if this is increasing or decreasing, is the amount of snow increasing or decreasing? We need to take a derivative, so a prime of t. Well, 50 is just a constant, so that's going to be the derivative is 0. But then the derivative of 0 to t s t dt is just what is inside, so the s of t part. Okay, and the same thing with the uh, 0 to t times m or times the integral of m of t dt. So we're just going to subtract m of t. So if I want to figure out what the amount of snow is doing, we're going to just go a prime of four of our two functions, s of four minus m of four. All right, and let's calculate that on our calculators. All right, and when I got this, I got 11.800. Four. All right, and then let's see what, what's happening here. Well, this is a value that is greater than zero. This is positive. So since the total amount of the snow, the derivative is greater than zero, it means it's positive. That means that the volume of snow is increasing at time t equals four. Now moving into our next question is asking us, all right, how much snow is on the slope after five hours? So since we just came up with a function that calculates the amount of snow at any point that's on that slope, we're going to bring that back in. But there's a specific way if you're pulling in work that you've done in another part of a question and free response question, you have to say from part C or from part A, wherever you're pulling it in from. So we're going to say from a, we're going to say that a of t equals 50 plus the integral 0 to t s of t dt minus the integral 0 to t m of t. So let's calculate this again on our calculators. All right, and from uh, typing that into the calculator, I get 95.3353. And again, using the specific uh, units from our question, we're going to say that this is cubic yards. Now, in our last question, we're going to ask, okay, and this is a very common thing to do on the AP Calculus exam. We want to write, but not solve an equation that can be solved for any time t when the snow would all be melted. Um, so we know that the snow machine is going to be turned off at time t equals 10. So what I'm going to do is again, from part C, pull in that function. All right, so now I'm saying, okay, we have A of t, look at part C to figure out what A of t is. So I don't have to rewrite it. Now I'm going to say, all right, in order to get the amount, we're going to get the amount at 10. So again, at 10, we just plug in zero to 10, S of T DT, zero to 10, M of T DT, and add 50 to it. So now I, we know what that amount function is supposed to represent. And then we're just going to go, all right, the amount of snow, the snow machine gets turned off at time t equals 10. So we're gonna subtract the amount by the rate that the snow melts, which is from K to 10, sorry, not from K to 10, which is from time t equals 10 to whenever that snow is going to melt, which we don't know, of the melted snow rate. That's how much time it's going to take for the snow to melt, dt. But this isn't a full equation yet. So what, what do we want to happen? How much, is, how much snow is going to be left on that mountain slope? Well, 
this is going to be equal to zero. That's the final piece that you have to write in, is that if you don't write that it is equal to zero, then you can never figure out what K is. That's what you're never gonna be able to figure out, all right, what time is it going to come out to be? So you do wanna make sure that it does come out to be zero or else your equation is not complete. We want all the amount to be melted. Zero snow on the slope. So now we're really getting into applications of derivatives, applications of integrals. You really want to start tying everything in together. And this is your chance to go and practice as many free response questions as you possibly can. You are able now to get through five out of six free response questions on the AP Calculus exam. So next up you have a practice problem of a free response question, just a particular part, and then you have a test and a quiz coming up. So make sure you study for those. And then we're going to have one more module where we really get into advanced integration techniques. So stay tuned for that. Of course, if you do need any help on this video and you want to reach out to me, please reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this was Mr. Hernandez Teaches.